Now, it gives me great pleasure to hand over to Steve Norris and also to Rachel Skinner, both of whom have played pivotal roles in creating interchange. Now, I'm sure Steve doesn't actually really need much introducing at all. Steve was an MP for much of the 1980s and the 1990s. He was a transport minister in John Major's government and played a significant role in pushing forward the Jubilee Line extension. Since then, he's been an independent advisor, mainly in transport and property. He might also reveal, actually, that he first met Andrew Dowding, who is the uh, founder, founding director of Interchange, almost 25 years ago, when Andrew had a curious idea of creating an integrated transport event called Interchange. So please welcome everybody, Steve Norris. much indeed, uh, Nicola. Um, yeah, I am a very old. Um, I'll give you that for a kickoff. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, uh, and um, yes, I'm here as chair of, of the, if you like, the overarching body called Meetings of Minds that uh, authored Interchange 2023. And um, embarrassing as it is for Nicola to have mentioned it, um, the first event that Andrew and I with Paul Wheeler actually did put on was um, actually called Interchange. Um, and what was interesting is that that was about physical interchange. You know, at the time we were, at the, we were in the days when the buses didn't necessarily relate their timetable to the train. Um, odd idea, really, but, um, you know, when the bus left five minutes before the train turned up, it wasn't actually optimizing the public transport opportunity. Um, when, for example, the physical infrastructure meant that it was very difficult for people leaving a station to actually see where the buses were, and so on. I mean, there were a myriad uh, opportunities for change and for improvement, and uh, in its day, when John Prescott, or oh, Lord Prescott, as I should, of course, call him, he'd be very angry if I didn't, um, uh, was uh, the Transport Secretary and Deputy Prime Minister, uh, we had a place. The key, of course, and it's always been the case, is that what we do with Meetings of Minds and what we very much uh, are doing here at Interchange 2023 is building public and private business community networks with really high quality events that optimize all the available talent in the industry. And we get great people along, and if I may say so, today's event proves it, and your attendance here is the evidence of it, very straightforwardly. Uh, Interchange 2023 simply couldn't be more different. Um, 20 years ago, nobody talked about climate change, possibly David Attenborough, but um, we would have nodded at David as we all do. Net zero, I'm not sure anybody would have had any idea of what net zero actually meant. And yet these are the challenges that are now not just academic challenges. They're not the kind of challenges that governments so often, and indeed even to this day, tend to want to put off until tomorrow because the challenge is simply so great. This is a challenge which is arguably the greatest challenge facing the planet on which we currently live. Uh, it's about the survival of the species. And I'm not here to lecture any of us about climate change. I'm not here to lecture any of us around net zero, except to say that we all know. Inconvenient as it may be, expensive may, as it may be, it may change the way we live our lives. Nonetheless, it's something that we're going to have to tackle. So, you know, today's interchange is very much about uh, integrated and intelligent transport infrastructure so that we can deliver social, economic, and environmental benefit. That's how we talk about it. We want to bring together a progressive new community of infrastructure operators, designers, builders, placemakers, technologists, all of those who want to improve the places and work toward the greatest challenge, as I say, that this planet has ever faced. And you'll see all of those principal constituents 
and participants represented here. Um, Nicola has already mentioned our headline sponsors to whom we're extremely grateful, but I think you'll appreciate as you came in and you saw the kind of people who are here with us and we're delighted to see them. You saw all the principal great infrastructure schemes that are happening in the UK right now. You saw the technologists, you saw the operators, you saw the consultants, you saw all of those people who play a vital role in helping us deliver the strategy that we all need. My concern is that we still don't have all the answers. It's enormously frustrating that all we do is pick dates out of the air arbitrarily without any recognition of whether they're actually seriously deliverable or not. They may create a headline in a newspaper for a day, but that's about what they're worth. Newspaper ends up on the bottom of a bird's cage. You only have to think in terms of uh, vehicles, electric vehicles by all means. Mr. Musk has persuaded us all that electric vehicles are the future, and indeed they are. But nonetheless, the charging network that we have is currently not fit for purpose. And much more significantly, the energy demand placed on a society that operates all of its uh, vehicle movement electrically is simply beyond comprehension and way beyond what we are currently dealing with. There are massive challenges there that not just in this room, but as a society as a whole, as a world, we're going to have to face. And I think about trucks. I was uh, Director General of the Road Haulage Association for a few years after I left Parliament. A 38-ton truck, as virtually everybody in this room will know, would need a battery weighing seven and a half tons. Lord Bamford has pointed out that the best-selling unit that he, as boss of JCB, sells throughout the world would need a battery weighing seven tons and presumably be recharged in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere where they're digging out the essential works to build some new infrastructure. We're nowhere near dealing with simple propositions like that. And then we come to energy itself. Is the future hydrogen? And we're a long way from the ability, as we've had for many, many years, to separate the hydrogen proton, but to actually compress it, to freeze it, to deliver it, to use it, whether through electrolyzers or as a direct fuel, we're really at a primitive stage of development. And meanwhile, let's not forget that whilst we kill about uh, 2,000 people roughly a year on our roads, that that's a challenge that we really all need to face as a society. It horrifies me. Um, if a loaded A380 were to crash about once every six or seven weeks, I suspect government would do something about it. And successive governments, my own included, where I'm proud to say we at least halved the, the death rate and got the KSIs down uh, proportionately, we're still facing a challenge there that technology has so much to offer. In all of these words, in all of these areas of our lives, technology is now absolutely front and center. Alistair Darling in 2015, actually, sorry, in 2008, I should say, when he was Transport Secretary, pointed out that uh, technology was now front and center in every aspect of transportation and of our lives, and of course he was right. Technology is very much a part of what we'll be looking at here over the next couple of days. I think you are yourselves the proof that this could be an absolutely great event for all of us involved in trying to solve the greatest problems, as I say, that our society has ever faced. It's a real pleasure. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the support of Interchange 2023.